Well, what's going on there, folks? Earthmaster here, checking in uh, on the channel here. It is January 8th, 2020, and uh, 7.47 p.m. I don't know if you guys seen that little social media thing popping up about the, uh, you know, at 8.20 p.m. on with 20 seconds. It's supposed to be like a, like a once-in-a-lifetime deal. I can't remember what, what it was all about, but uh, that was kind of going on like wildfire here. Almost coming up on 8.20 my time, but uh, it's supposed to be a whole bunch of 20s in a row. It's only supposed to happen once in your lifetime. Who knows? I wasn't... Uh, I didn't go into too much deep thought about it, but uh, I just thought I'd mention it. See if anybody else seen that posting. Uh, kind of grew like wildfire. Anyway, we are looking at the Earthquake 3D live stream here. Live shot of Yellowstone National Park. That is a live shot. That is not uh, daytime out there. I believe that's the uh, their night vision camera that they have out there. Which... Uh, uh, shows up pretty good there in the in the nighttime, of course, with the snow being white and whatnot. Uh, earthquake activity around the globe, folks. Here, last 24 hours of activity, a lot of fours. This part of the world looks pretty cluttered right now. I mean, everywhere you look out here, especially especially along the uh, Indonesia Islands region, um, looking pretty active. No major activity right now. Of course, they did have some larger activity over there uh, a couple days ago with a couple of sixes and uh, I don't believe it's over we're still looking at some larger activity in that region of the world also stretching up here towards the north over here by Japan and the Philippine well kind of towards the Philippine Islands region uh, we're looking at some increased activity as well just everywhere you look here there's a bunch a bunch of fours a big clobber of fours up here on this part of the globe um, so definitely we need to pay attention in that side of the world for uh, some increased activity. Uh, we did have a 4.4 off the coast of Vancouver Island. Of course, if you watched a couple of my update videos in the past, they did have uh, quite the sequence of events out there on the north part of the Juan de Fuca Plate there, uh, close to the Cascadia subduction zone uh, there off Vancouver Island. 4.4 showing up uh, within the last 24 hours. That is it. Uh, no other movement in that region, but uh, definitely notable considering it had been quiet uh, following that swarm of activity. Uh, Yellowstone, uh, pretty quiet. I'm going to go into the thumbnails here in a minute and show you guys uh, that activity, which is pretty much non-existent. There's been a little bit of speculation. I'm going to put a squash to that real quick. Uh, a little bit of speculation about some low harmonic type trimmers around the area in Yellowstone that is not uh, happening so California also pretty pretty quiet there was a 2.8 up here in Northern California fairly recent not close to Mount Shasta or Mount Lassen it's kind of like in the Sacramento Valley Northern Sac Sacramento Valley between Redding and Sacramento um, Southern California is still shaking a little bit from their earthquake act or the uh, aftershock activity in the Ridgecrest area. Oklahoma, 2.6 over here. Puerto Rico, big time aftershock activity. I mean, this is just the last 24 hours of earthquake activity in that region following that big quake down there that they had a couple days ago. Um, just, it's expected, right? Uh, their quake that they had was pretty big and it's uh, expected to have some adjustment and movement in the following days and weeks to come. So uh, this large list here will probably continue for quite some time as uh, far as the aftershock activity goes in the Puerto Rico area. 5.1 did happen a little bit away from that region at a little bit deeper depth. Um, this 5.1 right here that I'm going to flag right there in the blue flag little bit to the east southeast of the swarming activity it's on the, the uh, kind of like the northeast side of the plate down there and um, that's kind of interesting and a notable earthquake to uh, make note there down south here in Chile South America region nothing major to report five a little bit 5.2 down there and a 4.5 um, 
Well, other than that, uh, of course, Iran. I'm sure you've heard a couple of earthquakes struck over there around Iran right about the time as the, uh, the missiles and rockets were taken off, or shortly thereafter, I should say, um, with uh, the conflict last night of the United States and the Iran issue there. Of course, uh, they did have a plane crash as well right around that time, which is kind of strange. And uh, what, what was it? 176 people, I believe, died, perished in that uh, plane crash. Pretty sad. Pretty sad deal. I'm not going to go into co conspiracy theories on that, but uh, looking at a couple pictures that I seen of the wreckage showed, uh, well, obviously bullet holes or some type of heavy, high caliber type um, puncture holes in, in the wings and uh yeah who knows i guess we'll find out here in the coming days and weeks hopefully what the uh, true story on that airliner crash was out there in iran that uh a whole bunch of people lost their lives to uh, unfortunately quite a bit of canadians out there and um uh, yeah pretty horrible um yeah so we go back here to the forest pretty big uh, like i said pretty big uptick and inactivity out there on that part of the globe I do want to bring up, excuse me here, the uh, USG map, USGS map, one day all magnitudes here in the uh, United States. And we're going to zoom in here to the uh, New Madrid fault zone out here in the, uh, what is that, kind of like the Midwest area, right? Midwest. Never really been out there in that part of the country. I've been into... Well, actually, you know what? I guess I have. I kind of went to school out there in Ohio, up here to the north. I have been recently out to uh, Arkansas, um, digging for diamonds out there in that diamond field. I found nothing on a hot summer day. Um, but there is a little bit of activity showing up in this region of the, of the United States here. Now, that red color map that you're seeing right there is the um, hazard zone, right, for the New Madrid Fault Zone. And uh, it stretches for a good portion of a couple states down here through Arkansas and uh, up through these northern sta northern states. Uh, there's been a couple earthquakes, okay? Nothing major, but a couple earthquakes in this high hazard zone, a 2.1 and a 1.6, just today. Now, if we take this map back just a little bit here, let's go back. Uh, um... um, um, um Without my computer freezing, hopefully, I always say that, it never does. Let's go back seven days, all magnitudes, in this region of the world. And uh, we'll see what happens here. Okay. So as you can see, uh, just over the last week, a little bit of activity showing up here, folks, in this highly um, potential hazard zone for, for some major earthquake activity in this part of the country. Now, a lot of you, a lot of folks, I'm sure they're aware of it, uh, about the, what was it, 1811? I can't remember the exact dates when that happened. Um, let me look this up real quick on my phone, uh, New Madrid. Yeah, 1811, I was correct, okay. So 1811 to 1812, the New Madrid earthquakes, right? That's what they're called, was a series of intense intraplate earthquakes beginning with an initial earthquake of a moment magnitude somewhere between 7.2 and 8.2 on the Richter scale, which is pretty pretty uh, powerful for that part of the world and, of course, for that part of the country in that type of geological uh, ground out there. Of course, earthquakes in that part of the country feel a lot stronger and they, uh, they're... Uh, their reach is a lot stronger just because of the type of soil, the type of geological features that are out there. So when, once again, 7.2 to 8.2 struck on December 16th, um, 1811. That was followed by a moment magnitude of 7.4 aftershock um, that same day. And I'm sure there was more to that. Let's see two additional earthquakes of similar magnitude followed in January and February of 1812. So that following year. And of course, they've remained the most powerful earthquakes to hit the uh, contagious United States east of the Rockies in recorded history. 
a uh, pretty significant earthquake. Uh, it was felt roughly 130,000 square kilometers, which would be 50,000 square miles. Um, yeah, that's pretty, uh, pretty crazy. So looking at the last seven days of earthquake activity shows some increased seismic activity in this region here directly in the uh, the red area which is the most extreme area for uh, seismic hazard and the uh, just looking at the the magnitudes over here they're not big folks 2.5 2.4s but there's definitely been a significant uptick in the uh, in that region so uh, I think a 2.5 was like the most powerful well, I shouldn't say powerful but the, the highest magnitude in that region um, with the sequence of earthquakes here in the uh, New Madrid Fault Zone. And looking at the depths of these earthquakes, they range anywhere from, well, they vary quite often, uh, or quite quite differently, I should say. And that's, that's the only thing that's got me a little bit concerned, especially with the major activity in Puerto Rico and um, all the activity that happened a couple weeks ago off the coast of Vancouver Island there on the on the uh, San Juan de Fuca Juan de Fuca plate. So just an area to watch, folks. If you live out there, a lot of uh, a lot of people think, well, we're safe from earthquakes out here, right? It's uh, just tornadoes and and straight line winds and hail, all that stuff we have to worry about. Well, no, that specific area right there. <laughs> If you're within that area, definitely uh, have an earthquake plan. It's a, a significant area um, for some powerful earthquakes as they've happened in the past. It's been well over, uh, well, what are we looking at, 1811, well over 200 years um, since they've had those uh, powerful earthquakes there in the New, New Madrid fault zone. So uh let's see what else was i going to cover on this update here oh yeah the yellowstone earthquake map here pretty quiet folks a, a lot of people still worried about uh bring that up here in the right direction about yellowstone national park right now pretty quiet folks i think they maybe had a small uh two-pointer in the northwest corner of the park here northwest over here but other than that, no swarming activity, no no magma movement, no no uh, no harmonic frequency. What you're seeing in the darker blue on those maps that are showing up on the uh, pretty much the majority of the stations here at the same time are weather related. Whether it be wind, most likely wind speed in this area. Um, of course, wind can and will um especially if it's, if it's pretty intense up there which i'm sure it is sometimes uh, weather related events can show up on these seismograph stations out here so uh don't let the uh fear mongers out there scare you at all because it's not happening there's no magma movement no magma intrusion no imminent sign of any type of eruption going on at yellowstone national park so it's a beautiful area up there a lot of uh, snow it looks like and uh i'm hoping to get up there this year we'll, we'll see if it uh we'll see if it plays out hopefully something to be seen so anyway folks um that is it for the update video um what we got for the latest earthquake 4.0 down 4.3 how come that one says a 4. Point, hold on a second here. there we go 4.3, the latest earthquake there in the Puerto Rico region. And, of course, the latest earthquake there in the world. So, just pretty active, folks. Last 24 hours. So, remain vigilant. Remain on guard. Have an earthquake plan wherever you may be. California, Arkansas. You know, it's just something that we all live with out here. And uh, just have to, have to be prepared. Of course, I always tend to keep... Uh, I tend to keep stocked up. That's just, I mean, I'm not bragging or nothing, but I keep plenty of water, I keep plenty of gas, I keep plenty of uh, canned food items, toilet paper, beer. I mean, if you like to drink beer, beer is a necessity, right? Um, soda, water, of course, I said water. Um, cash on hand. Don't keep a significant amount of cash on hand, but definitely keep some, some cash just in case uh, banks 
and, and the power grid and stuff goes down the network goes down you just never know folks it's always good to be prepared out here so um hope everyone has a good night out there i am barbecuing up some uh, dinner right now i know I, if you're a listener of mine for a while i tend to barbecue late out here and that's what i'm doing out here on the wednesday night here in california i uh, got some more rain coming in so uh kind of like to barbecue and listen to the rain at the same time so have a good night folks we'll chat you guys a little bit later stay safe out there peace